Okay, today I will discuss antepartum hemorrhage. In this video, I will provide an introduction about uh, the antepartum hemorrhage, its main causes, and how to approach a patient with antepartum hemorrhage, and then how to deal with a case of massive antepartum hemorrhage. In the next videos, I will discuss the main causes, uh, the two main causes of antepartum hemorrhage. So. Let's start with a definition. What's antepartum hemorrhage? It is defined as any vaginal bleeding that occurs from 24 weeks of gestation till delivery of the baby. So any bleeding, no matter how much it is, how much is it, uh, before delivery is considered antepartum hemorrhage. And not that it should be from 24 weeks of gestation, that is, we, ha we are having here a viable baby. Before 24 weeks of gestation, vaginal bleeding is related to early problems of pregnancy, uh, like ectopic pregnancy and uh, miscarriage. Whereas after 24 weeks gestation till delivery, we call it antepartum hemorrhage, and after delivery, it's called postpartum hemorrhage. Antepartum hemorrhage is uh, quite common. It affects about 3% of pregnancies, and it is a major cause of uh, maternal mortality and also it can affect the fetus. Uh, the, uh, the main causes of uh, antepartum hemorrhage are uh, divided classically into two main groups. We have uh, causes that are related to the pregnancy, we call them the obstetric causes, and we have general causes that are not related to pregnancy, we call them non-obstetric causes. The obstetric causes are further subdivided into placental, maternal, and fetal. The main placental problems are the most important one, uh, include the placenta previa and abruptio placenta. These two conditions, placenta previa and abruptio placenta, account for about two-thirds of cases of antepartum hemorrhage. In the maternal cause, uh, we have the uterine rupture. Uterine rupture usually occur uh, when we have an induction of labor, so it's, it mostly occurs during labor uh, when uh, the mother is having poor contraction, we give her uh, oxytocin trying to induce more contractions but if we give an overdose of oxytocin, this may lead to hyperstimulation of the uterine muscles and end in a uh, rupture of the uterus and th this is especially seen uh, when uh, the uterus is previously scarred, for example we have a previous caesarean section. Of the fetal causes, we have fetal vessel rupture. This condition uh, specifically seen when the fetal vessels, when the umbilical vessels, are not directly inserted into the placenta. They are inserted away from the placenta between the amnion and the chorion. Here, the, the blood vessels are uh, not protected and are vulnerable to damage by any trauma. Uh, this condition requires an immediate caesarean delivery. These are the main obstetric causes. The non-obstetric causes uh, are, include cervical causes like uh, cervicitis, cervical ectropion, which is the condition in which the endocervic protrudes out of the cervix and undergoes squamous metaplasia. You know that the endocervix is normally covered by columnar epithelium. When it... Uh, a prolapse uh, through the ectocervix to the outside, it will undergo sequimus metaplasia, and this predisposes to a bleeding by any uh, trauma. Also, we have cervi cervical neoplasia. Vaginal and vulvar causes include uh, lacerations and neoplasia, and we also have uh, any medical condition that increase the tendency for bleeding, like clotting disorders. Um, Usually, the uh, non-obstetric causes are uh, benign conditions, except from the neoplasia, and uh, are usually presented with spotting, whereas the obstetric causes is uh, usually uh, presented with uh, more severe uh, bleeding. As I said, the placenta previa and abruptio placenta account for two-thirds of the cases of uh, antepartum hemorrhage while all the rest causes account for the remaining one-third. So I will uh, focus 
in the next two videos on placenta previa and abruptio placenta. Now, these are the main causes of antepartum hemorrhage. Now, how to approach a patient with antepartum hemorrhage? Now, this depends on the amount of the bleeding. If the bleeding is so massive, we don't have enough time. We must interfere as rapidly as possible. If the bleeding is less severe, we can take a rapid history. And uh, in the history, we must focus on certain things that will get us to the uh, real diagnosis. First of all, we must ask about the character of the bleeding, including the duration of bleeding, the amount of bleeding. As I said, obstetric causes are associated with more severe bleeding than non-obstetric causes. Also, we must ask if there is a clot, a clots associated with the bleeding, because the clots usually indicate uh, heavy bleeding. Also, the color of the bleeding, uh, bright uh, red bleeding usually goes with the previa while uh, darker color bleeding goes with the uh, abruptio placenta also we must ask about pain if there is any pain this is a very important symptom in antepartum hemorrhage it can differentiate between a placenta previa which is usually painless and abruptio placenta which is almost always painful we must ask also if there is any triggering factor and importantly an intercourse was this bleeding episode um, caused by an uh, intercourse uh, occurs after uh, intercourse this is uh, important and this is seen in uh, cervical ectropion uh, also in uh, abruptio placenta and so on also I must ask about fetal movement because we want to know if this bleeding is affecting the fetus or uh, it is and, and this indicates severity when the fetus start to be affected from a bleeding this indicates we have severe bleeding and we must also about ask about the risk factors for example in case of uh, abruption we must ask about hypertension hypertensive diseases of a pregnancy also we can ask about the risk factors for uh, cancer and so on so these are the main points to focus on in history when examining the patients, we must start with the vital signs, and the vital signs are important because they will uh, give us a hint about the uh, state of the mother, uh, the stability of, the, of her condition, and uh, tachycardia is the most important vital sign. It is the first sign of uh, shock uh, because uh, hypotension usually in pregnancy uh, considered a late sign of shock while tachycardia is the most important first sign. Abdominal palpation, we must palpate the abdomen. Tender uterus usually goes with abruption, while soft abdomen non-tender goes with previa. Then we may do speculum examination. Speculum examination is important for uh, diagnosing the local causes like cervicitis, ectropion. Digital examination is, con is contraindicated in any case of antepartum hemorrhage until we exclude the placenta previa because if we have a placenta previa and we insert our fingers this will provoke a severe episode of bleeding so digital examination should be delayed after we do an ultrasound and exclude placenta previa okay so after taking rapid history and do rapid examination, we must send for investigations. The investigations we send include blood tests. We send for uh, first, the most important thing is to send for cross match and to prepare a blood because the mother may go into a, an episode of massive bleeding at any time and you must prepare her a blood. We also send for complete blood count, looking for uh, anemia. We may also send for clotting study. Uh, we send um, if the mother is Rh negative. We send for a Klein heart test to uh, measure the degree of fetal maternal hemorrhage and see if the mother needs to take uh, Rogam and TD, and so on. Uh, then we must do an ultrasound scan. This is the most important investigation because, as I said, we must first diagnose or exclude placenta previa and ultrasound is the most sensitive test for this condition.
These are the maternal investigations we send. Then we send fetal investigations trying to know the condition of the fetus. Specifically, we send for CTG. The CTG will show the viability of the fetal heart. Um, for example, a placental abruption exposes, exposes the fetus for uh, fetal hypoxia. And this will be seen in, on the CTG. And we may also send for Doppler study. Doppler is important in diagnosing uh, and try to find growth restriction or if there is, for example, placenta accreta, which accompanies the placenta previa. And I will discuss this condition in the next video. And now, this is how we approach a patient with uh, bleeding. Now, if we have a patient presented to us with massive bleeding, we must interfere more rapidly. We start with the uh, ABC, we check the airway, we put uh, oxygen, and we check her circulation. We establish two IV cannula. We replace a fluid in one side, and this fluid, the best fluid to, to replace with is the blood. And if we don't have a blood, we can start with a crystalloid, like normal saline. And we put a Foley catheter, and we measure the fluid input and the fluid output. Also, we put the mother in a left lateral position to avoid compression of the inferior vena cava by the gravid uterus. And then we take a blood sample and send for investigations, the same investigations, cross match, preparing the blood, uh, complete the blood count, platelet count, uh, DIC, liver function test, renal function test, Kleinhauer test, and we assess the fetal condition with cardiotocogram and an ultrasound scan. And then we decide on delivery according to the condition. So this was a, a brief introduction about the um, antipartum hemorrhage. Next video will be about the placenta previa. Thank you very much.